What's going on guys? Welcome to a Berserk video, but this is not related to my Berserk manga analysis series that I'm doing. This is a off-the-cuff, just kind of talk about Berserk uh, vit kind of video, so this is no way connected to that. And uh, if you're looking forward to another episode of that this week, it might be a little late because I've been working a lot and I haven't really had time to sit down and write out a video, but uh, they will keep coming. Trust me. I've just been pretty busy with work and life and all that fun junk, but besides that, I wanted to let you guys know, though, I needed to get this out into a video and let you guys know that I have officially caught up with Berserk in its entirety. I, I finished, I have volume 39, and yes, I, de I did read volume 40 online, which I hate doing. I hate reading stuff online. Um, and it, actually, surprisingly enough, it's not really about... I mean, it is better to buy the physical media to support the artist and to support, you know, the property because if you want more of something, you know, you should give in order to receive kind of thing. I do agree with that. But more so when it comes to reading, I just hate reading things online because scrolling through pages does not give you the same experience or atmosphere as it does like reading pages from a book. Just because like the way things are laid out, like the way pages are laid out, even if they even if they put like a double spread like this online, you know, like the way your eyes when you're holding a book just kind of has to look through the top layer here and then through the bottom layer or when you're even like following dialogue, like it's so different on the page than it is on a screen. When you're just like scrolling through a screen and you just see like a flat image and you scroll and you see another flat image, I just hate it. I just hate the whole experience of reading like that. And maybe that's because I'm an old man. Uh, you know, I did just turn 30. So maybe that's just me and my old school ways, but I can't stand reading comics or manga or anything like that on a screen. It just, it annoys me. Plus you can't smell the paper. What the hell? Anyways, <laughs> it smells good, you guys. Do you, ever, just, do you ever just smell? You ever just smell your manga? You just sit around and it's fucking great. But enough about that. So I have officially caught up with Berserk. And so I felt like I owed it to my viewers that follow me for Berserk to just give you my overall kind of thoughts, opinions, moving forward, what I think, and, and that kind of deal. And if you didn't know, I've been reading a volume of Berserk a week. Um, you know, every week I would get one. that Way to save you money, too, so you don't have to buy the whole series outright. You just, like, every paycheck just buy uh, a volume or, or whatever it is makes it a little bit easier. So I've been reading Berserk since July of last year, but I have just finished. And um, volume 39, wow, I, I have to reread this actually because I, I loved this volume so much um, where Guts finally re reaches the Elf Island. And I know some viewers, some people that have been reading Berserk for years, you know, it took Kentaro Miura eight years to write Berserk, <laughs> write Guts and company actually coming to the island, and I couldn't imagine where that kind of wait is going to be, but now I will be able to experience long waits and hiatuses with all of you. And I knew that the hiatuses were long, and that was another reason why I was trying to read a volume a week, just because I knew I would get to this point where I would eventually run out. And I didn't want to run out, I wanted to prolong my enjoyment, but I have officially, uh, I officially made it there. So spoiler alert, if you haven't read volume 39 and 40, uh, so this is great. So Guts getting here and Guts getting Casca uh, revived or, or healed and whatnot and how they had to do it, how they had to go into her dreamscape and it's kind of like Inception in a way. But they've done stuff like this before a little bit because, um, you know, I'm covering the Conviction arc right now in my other videos and there's the whole sequence where they send out the dream or the vision of uh, Griffith the White Hawk coming to save everybody. Everybody gets this premonition that they would see their savior eventually come and that was all given to people through their dreams, you know knows this kind of collective consciousness which I'm always talking about in Berserk this like the deep deep layers of, of the abyss you know where everyone's consciousness is connected it's like a whole different abstract world and uh, you know our dreams kind of connect each other and so the fact that they could go into her dreams or into her mind um, in that way and kind of piece her back together and literally piece her back together they're finding memories and they're finding feelings you know Farnese is feeling feelings that Casca felt back in the day and they they're you know piecing her all back together literally because the um the the imagery and the symbolism of what they did in the dreamscape is great i mean because you have guts the dog as you know this wounded 
beaten, uh, you know, destroyed dog. And, we, you know, Guts' is Beast of Darkness has always been represented as like a dog-like creature. You could say it's a wolf or a hound or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, it's a, it's a canine, you know, like creature. And just seeing this canine that's dragging this coffin that symbolizes, you know, the weight of him dragging the the memory and the past and the burden and the the you know emotional trauma and devastation of the band of the hawk and you know Casca being in the coffin um you know protecting her from the things that are going on around it's it's just like it's just great symbolism and Kentaro Miura has always been really really good at that um and then going through her dreamscape you know going through you know and seeing all these different memories and uh, everything from the Golden Age arc, and um, it was really funny when they stumbled upon Casca's uh, sex scene with Guts, which was really, really funny. Um, <laughs> sure, is like, for research purposes. Uh, and all that was great. And, and then uh, in Volume 40, where it continues, you know, they get to uh, the demon, ch they see the demon child inside Casca's dream, you know, and, and swirling around. This child is like the heart, you know, this is the pure... The goodness, something good that came out of the devastation and swirling around the demon baby is all the horror memories of the eclipse, which I guess Casca did not get immediately. Um, so we're still up in the air about that. So that's where it, it continues, where it's to be continued. Casca comes back, but she says she can only remember up until where they went to save Griffith. And after that, it's all fuzzy, and she doesn't really know. And she wants to see Guts, and Guts arrives. And upon Guts' arrival, she sees an image of the Eclipse behind Guts, and she screams. And we don't know what happened after that. And that came out like a year ago. That chapter came out a year ago. I just caught up to it now. And so we don't know if seeing Guts has triggered all the memories from the Eclipse, what she remembers, what she's going to want to do with Guts, about Guts, what their conversation is going to be. Is she just going to go right back into her feral state? I mean, there's so many things. What's she going to want to do? What is Casca's... Um, because Guts' mission is now technically over, in a way. Um... Because at first he was, you know, going all gung-ho, kill every single apostle, find Griffith, kill him, revenge. And that slowly shifted uh, throughout the Conviction arc to what's really important is protecting Casca and making her well again, if there's a way to do that. Um, and so that's what he's done. He's gone on this journey. And hell, if you were following this since when it was starting to release, you've gone on like a 15-year journey of Guts trying to get Casca to the Elf Island and then finally get her mind restored. So Guts, I think now, is he going to fall back onto his idea of going after Griffith for revenge? I'm not really so sure. Um, I'm sure that's in the back of his mind. I'm sure it's something that he's always going to want to do in a way. But him viewing Casca with the love that he has as so much more important, I think he's going to do what's best for him and Casca. Um, together. And if that means not going after Griffith, that might be what it means, you know? And speaking of Griffith, so what is his endgame now? Because now Griffith has his kingdom, he has Falconia, he has, he's bringing everybody together, everybody's being gathered into this one location, which is very bad, because if you remember, as it was stated by Skull Knight before, and as we've seen before, like in the Tower of Conviction, is that when lots of people are gathered in one location that have this kind of collective consciousness of negativity that makes it easier for beings like the God Hand to come into our world. Um, because there was the whole heretic, orgy, craziness that happened in Conviction Arc, and that caused the image of Slan to be dancing um, in the fire, and there was also all the negativity of the Black Plague that was going on, which caused the God Hand member Conrad to kind of show himself in the form of rats briefly. So if you're congregating pretty much almost the entire world or whatever it is um, into this one location, with all of you know the evil that's in humanity, because it seems nice and happy and everything, but we all know that human beings are just naturally filled with evil as well. And so when you gather all of this evil into one location, it's going to make it that much easier for the God Hand to rise, and maybe that's what's going to happen. 
but Griffith here, Griffith as a king, as a ruler, and, you know, wanting to soar higher and higher, now he has his original goal. He has his kingdom. He is a king. He's he's the ruler. He's the the savior, the god. I mean, they view him as Jesus, practically. You know, he's that imagery, the, um, the relation between Griffith and Jesus. There's so many parallels there. Um, so th they view him as, his, as the savior, right? Um, so if Griffith is just going to bring the God hand up, I don't think it's going to end there. I think Griffith has more of a plan to overthrow the rest of the God hand or to get rid of them so that he is the only one, uh, the only one with power. Because as we know, Griffith is extremely power hungry and he's not going to stop. He, he doesn't have a stopping point. You know, the only thing that could have ever stopped him um, is his love for another person, which was Guts. Um, and whether you want to say that's romantic love, platonic love, friendship love, whatever it is, it was love. Um, and that's what was distracting him from his goal because he, he found Guts so much more important for some reason, some inexplicable re reason. And that's kind of what love is. You know, you don't really have an explanation for it. You just feel drawn to a person, attracted to them in some way. Um, more than sexually, you know, you just feel this like ultimate attachment to a person um, and it distracts and, and they become more important than anything else you had planned. And that's what happened to Griffith and he couldn't understand it. He couldn't deal with it. He couldn't bear with it. And he also couldn't bear with the fact that, you know, Guts is a guy that doesn't have his own dreams and ambitions. And so that's something that Griffith could never, like, I can't consider somebody that doesn't have their own dream, you know, my equal, my friend. You know, he said that himself, that was his philosophy, and yet, every step of the way, Guts was more important, and Guts was more important, and it just, it, it just delved into Griffith so much that it just, he couldn't understand his feelings, and he lashed out, and bad shit happened. Um, but now, with Griffith being a God Hand member, one has to wonder how much of him is still in there. I know there's, like, some debate of whether, you know, this is still the Griffith from the Golden Age, or if this is a completely different entity and being that just has like some semblance of Griffith but really it's you know it is Femto they're not the same um I don't know I think they're the same I think because we've seen like with Rosine and, and even the Count that Apostles still kind of hold on to things that they loved as people you know Rosine still wanted Jill to be her friend she wanted to turn her into a monster yes uh, but she still loved her, and the Count still loved his daughter, and he refused to sacrifice her, um, and that's why he, he went into the, the vortex. So, why would a God Hand be that much different than an Apostle when it comes to that? I believe that they still do have, um, deep down, their affections for the people that they loved as humans. It's just um, this demon entity has kind of taken more control. But I think that Griffith is going to want the to call the God Hand up, and maybe even more than that, uh, Griffith wants to become, I believe, Griffith wants to basically become God. Griffith now knows, has confirmation, that there is not only life beyond death, but there are things that control fate and control causality. Um, when Griffith was just a human, thinking that, you know, a king was the highest level that you could go, that's the highest he dreamed of. But now Griffith knows that, no, there are things beyond humans, there are things beyond this, there is, you know, quote-unquote, a god, whether it's the idea of evil or whatever it is. So why would Griffith want to stop where he is at now when he knows he's not at the top? He's not really at the top. I mean, he's at the top of mankind, but there's more to existence than just mankind. Uh, so now I believe Griffith's goal will be to become God in some sort of way. That's that's what he wants to do. So I think he's going to want to eliminate the God hand and be the uh, and whatever they serve, the idea of evil or whatever it is, and become that one and only true ruler of everything that controls fate, controls causality, controls the world, controls just absolutely everything. So that's where I think Griffith is heading. So. We gotta cover some loose ends that are still out there in the world of Berserk as we wait for more chapters and more things to come up. So here's a few things that I just kind of wrote these down um, of just these loose ends and just kind of my brief thoughts on them. Uh, one was the Guts and Casca reunion, which I already kind of touched on. Um, I think it'll be more so how Casca reacts. I think it'll be. Um, I think she'll 
it'll be a very traumatic experience, but I think there will be some kind of reconciliation between her and Guts, and I think they will be able to overcome it in a way, and then decide what they want to do from there. And for Casca, I think it's going to want to be to uh, get to her child or find the child because she inherently knows that her child is out there and that um, you know the moon child is theirs. Guts, um, I think he had like a brief thought about it. He's like, yeah, maybe this thing, but he, he wasn't sure. But Casca just inherently kind of knows. Um, so that might be what she wants to do, but I'm not sure. Um, and as for the moon child itself, okay, the moon child. So obviously the moon child is Guts and Casca's child. I don't really think it's going to wind up being something else. I mean, it might... But I think most signs point to Casca being drawn to it, it wanting to protect them, it coming out on the full moon, specifically visiting them every time, it stopping Guts from the Berserker armor taking over. Like, there's just... It, it, there's too many things. Like, it it clearly is their child. Um, but is the child, as many people theorize, is the child sharing a body with Griffith? Um, is the child taking over the body when the moon comes out? And that's why we only see it during the moon. Um, because the demon baby was swallowed up by the egg that rebirthed Griffith, and is the baby was the baby the vessel that Griffith needed in order to be reborn? Um, you know, we don't really know. We don't really know the full logistics of the whole thing. But I do think that's the case. I do think that Griffith and the Moonchild are sharing a body, and I do think the only way to kill Griffith will be to kill the child. Um, and I think that that will cause a paradox and a problem, a big problem, when it comes to Casca and Griffith, or Casca and Guts, is that are they willing to murder their own child in order to murder Griffith? Is it worth it? That kind of thing. Um, I also think that uh, in the very last chapter we just got, it showed Griffith staring at the full moon and then he kind of disappears from the window. Not only is that further confirmation that he's the moon child, I think, but I think now the child's going to go and try to find its parents. Well, if the moon child shows up in the elf village, maybe that will also help Casca get over her trauma. Maybe her having the child and guts there together will get over it. But then we lead into where they're at in the elf island. We know that time moves differently there. And we got that foreshadowing way back when, when we got the Peacock story, and it was retold to us before they entered the island, that time on the outside is going to move faster than time on the inside. So, could it be that the Moonchild will show up there, and they will have a reunion, and they will, you know, figure things out, they won't know that the Moonchild is, is Griffith or whatnot, but while that's happening, time is moving faster on the outside, and now Falconia does not have its king. Now Griffith is gone. And what if Griffith winds up being gone for like 50 years? You know, the people would be in turmoil. It would be heck, it would be craziness. It would be madness. There would be riots. People would be going crazy. The beautiful Falconia would be falling into madness. And with that madness, that evil, that concentrated evil in one area, boom, God hand rises in his absence. And what would they do? How would they, would they rule the people a, a completely different way? They would do it I, probably with an iron fist, with horror, with evil, with, you know, they wouldn't do it with the elegance of Griffith. Now, that's just a, a quick theory, but something is going to happen with time moving differently on this island. There's no way they're going to bring that up and not use that in any way, shape, or form. And so if time's going to move differently, then if Griffith shows up there as the child and Griffith's away from his kingdom bad shit's going to happen. Um, it will also change a couple of things. Now, mo all the main characters are on the island, so we don't got to worry about that. But Rickert, that it showed not too long ago, showed Rickert and Erica, um, he's going to have a very important part to play because they wouldn't have brought him back for basically an entire volume if he wasn't. So he's going to probably be aged up a bit. You know, he's like a teenager now, so he'll probably be in his like 30s or 40s or maybe more um, if the time skip happens. So that could happen. All right. Uh, so, other loose ends. The other one is the bailet that Guts carries with him. Um, he's carried it with him since the very beginning. Very beginning of, of the manga series, he, he got the bailet that was the Count's, and uh, he's been holding on to it. 
and all as we know, the Baylets are all destined to be with somebody. Um, it is the Count's Baylet, right? You can correct me on that if I'm wrong. I, I can't remember. Um, I thought it was. But it might be destined for somebody in Guts's party. And who could it be de destined for? Well, um, what, I mean, what could it be? Who, who could it be destined for and what purpose would it serve? Because if somebody just turned into an apostle, that's the thing. Because Guts with Berserker armor now, I mean, Guts has been fighting apostles for so long now that just an apostle itself would not be difficult to kill. I mean, would it be if, um, I don't want to say wouldn't be difficult, but it, he, he's done it before, you know? Um, what would make it difficult is if it was a member of his party, but who would use it? Who, who would use it and under what circumstance? That's the thing. Um, the only, the ones I could see using it, at first I thought Serpico, because Serpico has always kind of had a dislike for Guts. He doesn't like that he changed Farnese. He's fought him a couple of times. Um, he's had a distrust for Guts. However, in the last volume, in 39, um, him and Guts really did have a heart-to-heart, -heart, and it seemed like they were very cool with each other, and they were friends, and they'd gotten over this, and they consider each other teammates now. That's not to say that there's not something else in Serpico that would want to use the bailout against him, but also what would happen... Like, Farnese would have, would have to die for Serpico to be in such despair that the ba bailout would activate, because you can't use the bailout unless you're in despair, you know, complete despair. That's, um, so, I mean, what would cause that for Serpico? I guess Farnese's death is the only thing I can think of. Um, as the bailiff may be meant for Farnese, because we see that she's realizing Casca and Guts have this love together, and she's getting jealous, and she's feeling sad about it, and she's going to see Guts and Casca together. Is there going to be a moment uh, where she uses the bailiff? Now, I don't really think that's the case. I don't think Farnese's... I mean, but she does have a history, though. She does have a history of, you know, with the Holy See and burning people at the stake and everything. She does have that sadistic side that's deep within her. Um, you know, that's like her beast of darkness is her, like, sadistic, you know, getting off on burning people at the stake. I mean, she never, she's, she grew up thinking that was the right thing to do. So she's, she has this kind of skewed view of the world that's been being fixed by her, you know, journey with Guts and her relationship with Shirke, but, but I don't know. Um, I don't see really Isidro using it because he's kind of a comic relief character and that would be, it would be a twist, but I don't see that happening. I, obviously, Puck, Roderick, I, I, you know, I don't really see it being one of them, but maybe, I, maybe, you know, you never know. Uh, and could it be activated here on the Elf Island? You know, could something happen? Could Casca? Could it be Casca's? Could she be in such despair from getting her memories that she doesn't know what to do and she just the bailiff just winds up activating for her? You know, what would happen? Uh, I don't think she would sacrifice anybody, but that's the thing. That we don't know, because we in order for Griffith to use it, we saw what he went through. You know, we saw the year of torture that he went through, and we saw you know his feelings and thoughts on getting his kingdom and everything. So. I don't know. And uh, my last loose end here is the Skull Knight. Where the fuck is he? Where is Skull Knight? Uh, we last saw him when he tried to attack Femto, and then uh, Femto used his sword slash to open up everything. And my last, I reviewed volume 34 because I was so stoked when I read it that it, it was just so awesome I had to review it. Um, and now where is he? Where is, where is he gone? Is he just stewing about his failure? Is he searching for guts? Is he gonna try to sneak attack Femto again? Where is Skull Knight? You know, I, and I do believe Skull Knight is a good guy, a good character. I know there's some theories out there that he's like been manipulating guts, but the fact that Skull Knight and Flora, the witch, Shurike's master, um, were friends and, you know, helping each other out. Because I don't see her as being evil at all. I, I think she's a good character. She's helped these characters out, and she's fought against the you know the apostles and whatnot. So I, I, I see her as a good character, and if Skull Knight is associated with her, I can see I see Skull Knight as a good character. Um, but where is he? What's he doing? What you know? I want to know where Skull Knight is, and and if he is King Geyser, we need the full backstory. We need to know. What happened to that kingdom? That kingdom that fell because King Geyser, you know, he came out. It says that he came out of nowhere and unified the people. I mean, that's kind of what Griffith is doing. 
but and I always thought you know maybe Skull Knight was a god hand at one point and if that's what Griffith is doing and Griffith is a god hand then maybe Skull Knight was a god hand at one point maybe this is all a cycle maybe he was the fifth god hand and this happened and then everything was destroyed and then like a new god hand started I don't know you know it's just like circle of of causality and he just wound up surviving and so, somehow um I don't know uh, all I know is that we need to get a good backstory for it. I don't think we need a backstory for every God Hand member. I just think whatever happened with Skull Knight and Void and the Kingdom and everybody being sacrificed, we need to know about that. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And the, my camera battery is going to die pretty soon, so I'm just going to stop it there. Um, that's kind of my initial thoughts and ideas and and all of that for Berserk moving forward. So I'm officially caught up, so spoilers galore. You can talk to me about anything about it, because I'm all the way caught up. Um, and I'm, I am I love this series so much. It, it means a lot to me. I'm so glad that I got into it. And uh, can't wait to see where it goes from here. And I can't wait till 10 years from now when I have three more chapters to talk about. Man, it sucks being caught up. But tell me your thoughts, tell me your theories down below. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll try to get another analysis video out very soon. As soon as I can, it's going to be a little late. Um, but we'll see what I can do about it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.